everybody, Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint this fun 4th of July acrylic painting on canvas. This is a great easy beginner painting, friendly for all levels. I'm going to explain every technique, every color mix, every tool that I'm using in this painting. So even if you've never painted before, I have completely got you. In fact, I've been doing this for 10 years on YouTube, so I'm pretty good at helping beginners get through a first fantastic painting. If you check the description below, you will see a list of materials that I use in this. I also go over that at the beginning of the painting. Man, this is a lot more friendly to a new painter than you might expect. I don't expect you to know how to draw. If you go to the website, theartsherpa.com, there is a free traceable for download, but guess what? I am going to show you how to draw it in if you want to try that for the first time. Uh, you'll also see that this is time stamped and chapter marked, and that means that you can find your place again really easily and bring a lot of people through. There's a lot of resources that go with it that make it fun and easy. If you are here for the live chat premiere, any of that, put your questions all in caps. Myself or the moderators will get to you. If you're here on the replay and you have a question, you put that in the comments down below. I will probably see it. Now let's go over the materials that I used in today's lesson. I used a number 30 Simply Simmons, but honestly it was just to paint the background uh, black and it's not a brush you have to have because you're just going to paint the background black. That's going to be the first thing. I used a small bright. This is a number six catalyst by Princeton, but it's just a small bright. It gives me good edges. I used a nice Raphael number 10 round. It's just a round brush to do these techniques. I also had a detail liner to do these techniques. I used this brush for splatter to get my stars and everything, but I have a video about all the different ways you can splatter. So if you don't have a stiff toothbrush or a good splattering tool like this, you can go check out that video or you know what? You don't have to splatter because a lot of people don't love it. And to that end, I did have a titanium white fluid acrylic um, just because I find that makes it easier for splatter, but it's super optional, not required. Just one of those things. Remember the colors in this particular painting are very exchangeable because we're not doing color mixing. Oh, let me show you what else we've got on this lesson. So getting into this project, I am on an 11 by 14 canvas. This is the uh, Alternatives Economic Cotton, the Economy Cotton. I have the wish or intention that you have a happy 4th holiday, happy 4th of July. I have out Mars Black, Cad Yellow Medium, Titanium White, Thalo Blue, Cad Red, and Burnt Sienna. But honestly, for this painting, you just use your any yellow, any blue, any red, any brown, any black, and any white that you have because it's not such a dependent on color mixing as much as it is technique. So you don't have to worry so much about the color mixing. Shall we throw up step one, sir? Now, if you check the description down below, um, you'll notice that the timestamps are all chapter marked and those chapters, those match the uh, mini books and other resource material. Um, the traceable for this is on the website, theartsherpa.com. I'm just putting out black paint directly from my tube because I'm gonna paint the entire canvas black. And that's You can do that any old way you want. This is just my weird way of doing it. I'm gonna take some white and mist uh, water. I'm gonna take some water and mist it down so that I can spread it around and you just use a big number 30 Simply Simmons brush to paint the whole surface black. So yeah, you don't need to be particularly fancy or special on how you're doing this. I just want to make sure that my surface is black so that when I do the rest of the techniques, they go really, really well. Anyway, so the description below, the Art Sherpa website, you can find this black paint, this brush, all kinds of art materials in our art store, resources like the traceable that goes with this, um, you can also find mini books and things over there. There's just a lot and 2000 other lessons and other fun 4th of July paintings that I have done. I even have a spray paint one. If you have spray cans and you ever wanted to figure out how to use the spray cans, I have an introduction to spray can art. That's a 4th of July painting. And then some other one who easy holiday paintings that you can do that we're adding this to. I'm just making sure this is all spread out black so that everything we do next is super easy. It's gonna be really fun. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Now, I'm gonna dry this. And I always try to say this now just so that people know this because sometimes when you're new to painting along with a video online, you don't know this. I'm gonna dry, you're gonna dry. You're gonna pause me <laughs> while, I, while you dry. And then by the magic of video, when we come back, my canvas will be dry. 
and your canvas will be dry and we'll be painting together. But don't try to keep up with me and do all that. Remember, if you're ever feeling stressed or pressed in a lesson, put me on pause, catch up, and then hit play. Because I'm just here waiting for you. I'm, I'm on your time, your schedule. That's why this is relaxing. Okay, we'll come back. Both of our surfaces will be dry. So now I'm going to take a liner brush, this right here, and I'm going to put out a little bit of my golden fluid acrylic paint, a little bit of my white paint here. Um, I like fluid for this part of the job. It's a preference. You could also thin your white paint um, with water, but I like a highly pigmented white. And I'm going to come here and make a little dot that's a focus star. And I'm going to go ahead and add some up into the side little sparkles to it. All right. I'm going to do that a couple of places. Um, and that's just really so that um, I have some of these when I do the splatter kind of worked out before I do the splatter. It's a new way of doing this. I'm kind of putting these over to the side. Just a few little sparkly stars. Ooh, let's really sparkle that one out. I might sparkle this one out too. Let's really sparkle them out. Sometimes it's nice to have little star sparkles just because they really let you know what they are in the sky. I'll definitely like maybe put one over here. And this will balance off our little sparkly sparkles lean into John's space over there. See, just their little, their little silly sparkles. All right. Now, while I put this down here, I know you hand me, there's my tool. I'm going to use my splatter tool. Now, I have shown other ways of splattering. I've got a whole video about splattering. I'm going to use my, um, this looks like a toothbrush, like an extra firm toothbrush, and you could use an extra firm, firm toothbrush. This is actually a real artist brush that I designed uh, for an old set and unfortunately can't get it anymore, but you could use a stiff toothbrush or you can grab your Galaxy set and go ahead and Ooh, add some sparkly that's, stars. That's some sparkle. Right? That's some little sparkle. That's very nice. I'm going to rinse that out. And I got a little bit of a bloop there. I can do two things. I can paint out the bloop. Or I can just take the paint and pretend like we meant for it to be there. So those are the choices that you have when you have a bloop, a big drop. You can just be like, oh, maybe it's in the sparkly star. <laughs> maybe I'll add another one here now that I'm seeing them. Just looking for the little balances. We're just adding little sparkly stars. Just nothing big. It's just little sparkly stars. Now, I can't do anything else until this is dry because these little white dots will go everywhere. It takes a minute to dry them. So once again, you pause me and don't push play until your canvas is dry. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a little table or something for my jars to sit on. I'm going to grab my burnt sienna and I'm going to just sort of kind of curve a little arc here. This is very decorative. We just want to make sure that we have a, a place that our, our jars could exist on, right? Something to ground it. Something to ground it. We're not really worrying about our rendering or our perspective or any of those things. This is very light at this stage. And I'm going to just paint the brown in down here. And then I'll do some little grains for woodwork. And that's all we have to do for that. It's pretty chill. Wood is a very forgiving kind of medium to paint, uh, especially in the beginning stages, you know, and so you can get deep into wood grain. Wood can become quite colorful, in fact, but when you're starting out, just the idea that these objects are here is important. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of white onto my brush, and I'm going to go ahead and make some little short marks and little wiggle marks, and these are kind of the little wood grain marks. See how we're doing that? Yeah. Little wood grain. Yeah. We're not being serious about it yet. Can always come back and add more brown anywhere. And then you can get a little white and just be like, and it's a little wood grain. It's 
There you go. Just a little bit of wood grain. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We're gonna dry that again. I'm gonna put this brush aside. This was a three quarter inch angle brush. And um, I just use it because it gives me a nice edge, but you could use a bright, you could use a round, you could use any brush that you're really sort of comfortable painting areas with. I, whatever's in your brush kit that you're like, oh, I could probably get a little sort of semicircle painted in, will be perfectly fine. All right, let's dry, dry, dry. So I'm gonna take this little brush. This is a uh, half inch. This is the number six Princeton Catalyst Bright, okay? So it's just a square brush and that's because I want some hard edges. I'm gonna go ahead and get just a little bit of white and blue mixed together on my brush. And I'm going to come here in the center and I'm gonna make a little semicircle smile, about that big. Then next to it, I'm gonna make another one, same size. And then next to it, I'm gonna come back and make another one, same size. So that's the basis for how I'm gonna get my jars in. Now, I wanna come up here and I wanna make matching little lines. But what I find from here is that using a T-square ruler and some chalk, if you're not gonna use the traceable, you can use the traceable here and transfer the jars onto the canvas. I find that this will give me a little bit of forgiveness if I'm working some things out. I'm gonna grab uh, a T-square ruler. This gives me straight lines. Again, if you're using traceable, not so much worry. And I'm gonna give some straight lines up on the outer edges of my smiles. I am straight line challenged. So I like to do this. That's okay. I am too. <laughs> Little straight line challenge in my life. I don't worry too much about the lengths because I'm going to come across and end the jars all in the same way. So I can come across here and say my jars will all be about this high. That's leaving lots of extra room, right? For the jars to finish and for me to put in little sparklers that are sparkling. I'm gonna do a shouldered jar, which means I come up a little bit with like some shoulders. I'm gonna go across. I'm showing you how to draw this, but again, it's totally okay to use the traceable. I'm gonna go across and then just up again. We're just doing little mason jars. So once that's in, right, let's call that a step. I do the smile so you can really see it. The chalk doesn't really show up on the brown if you're wondering why I chose paint. It's because a lot of times it doesn't really show for you the chalk over certain colors and it won't show over this brown. I'm going to get back into my blue and white. Come on the outside. Just kind of work out some of these lines. They don't gotta be perfect. Adding in the little jar edges here. And then I'll just come across with a very light dry brushing of the white for the top, right? So pretty chill at this stage. All right, that's all you need there. If you wanna clear up your chalk, you can do that with just a damp brush. And remember, if you wanna change anything about your jars, you can do that pretty easily as well because a lot of them is against black paint. So you can straighten out a line, like if I wanna straight out this line here, pretty easy to do. So nothing to be stressed about, right? I don't really need to dry anything, but I'm going to, because I wanna kind of sketch out where I want my sparklers to be so they have a nice balance and a nice arrangement on the canvas. I'm gonna take my chalk, chalk tool again. Now this is a Dritz Taylor's chalk chalk tool. You can get these at Joann's, but you can also just use the chalk you use on kids' board, like kids' chalkboards. It's actually a really good chalk for this. I'm gonna do, I think, one sparkler that's sort of straight and then one that's kind of curved over and another slightly shorter one that's maybe burned down a little more. 
right? So I have this nice arrangement of three here. Then through here, I'm going to come out and I think I'm going to do two sparklers in this jar, kind of coming out towards the right. And I'm going to do two sparklers in this jar. I don't want it to lean in right. I want it to be center and left. So I've got some nice balance in my arrangement of the sparklers, right? So I sketch that in with that. I'm going to take my bright again because it's going to give me a good edge. And I'll mix some yellow and red together to make orange. I can get some brown in it. I'm going to come here and just... Let's get some white in there to actually help it show more. Paint those in right across my jar lines. That's because I actually paint the jars in last. Those are just little guides for you? Right now, these are little guides. That's why I'm very chill about this. And that's something to know about painting is that when you're going along, a lot of times you can be a lot chiller than you think about what you're painting feels super serious, but actually it's very mellow, whether it's a complex painting. See this one I ended up doing, ended up not being, uh, the boo-boo one is probably gonna get sparkled out and that's okay. That'll happen sometimes where you fix your boo-boo, but then it gets sparkled out by something else. But it's good to be in the habit of fixing a boo-boo. Just making sure I've got good coverage on all of these. Okay, so we're gonna call that a step. Let's dry everything, we come back with our canvas dry, I'll show you what you do next. Now for this next part, I'm gonna use a round brush. This happens to be a number 10 Raphael Textura. You don't have to use this exact brush, you just want something that's got a good point, that's a bit stiff that might even kind of splay out with on you if like this, like with hair, if you're gonna make lines with it. So it's very stiff. I'm going to arc around radial lines using my heavy body paint. I'm losing up star here as well, but that's okay. Maybe I'll keep it. Those sparklers tend to be in perfect concentric grounds. Things I find out sometimes after I'm like going, I'm like, mm, didn't need a star. I'll put a different yeah. star in somewhere. You might wonder, why are you painting it white if these are all going to be in color? And that is because a lot of times your paint, my paint, acrylic paint won't cover over a dark color. So this white is a really cool trick to get bright color, even if you're painting with student paint. Going to just paint around. Like to make sure that the centers of them are very bright. And really arc these around. I don't know if you have these where you live. These are really big where we are. The little handheld sparklers. They still let kids hold on to these things and run around the neighborhood. I kind of thought they would go the way of lawn darts, but they did not. <laughs> And I just kind of come around these things, just painting these little circles on, at the top of each one. You can see we just go right in front of, we layer it in, right? Mm -hmm. I'm letting a lot of the background show through. I'm being pretty light with this. 
And it's okay to go off the canvas with your sparkles. It implies the world exists beyond your sparklers that are in these mason jars. It'd be a really pretty arrangement, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mason jars. Okay, we're going to call that a step, and we're going to just let that have a rest for a second, come back, and work on our jars. So now I'm going to paint in my jars a little bit more. I'm going to take my blue and my white and my bright brush again. This was the six earlier, and I'm going to come here. And I'm going to just paint in a little bit of the reflection of my jars. I want it to be kind of dry brushy, so I'll not have a lot of water on my on my brush, right? These are real simplistic. You can see I'm just making little curve lines, kind of represent the glass. Dry brush with a little bit of white and blue. And not too deep into it because I still want room for the lettering. I'll do a strong line there for the jar shoulders. Just dry brushing. So you can see that a lot of the background is still sort of showing through. That helps it feel a little bit like glass. Doesn't look too bad. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of my red and yellow. And down here at the bottom, I'm going to loosely put in some red and yellow. And it's going to be more focused on the right hand side. Maybe bring it up a bit. Because, you know, glass is just, it's got a lot of personality to it. While this is all having a moment here, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of black. I'm going to come underneath my jars and add a shadow. Glaze that out. All right, and that just grounds things, doesn't it? And that's one of the things to think about um, when you're painting is that objects, how they impact light. Okay. Now let's dry everything, and when we're back, I'll show you what you do next. So now I'm going to use a number one liner. This is a Princeton Select liner, and I'm going to get my white paint from earlier. And I'm going to come along here and just kind of detail on my little jar a little bit. I'll come across parts of the way and bring this down. The jar, this is like kind of a brighter white highlight. It's kind of nice, light little painting. Just a little bit so we can really see everything. And then I can write words. Now I think I am going to write Happy Fourth July, but you could write ball across these if you wanted to. You know, that would also be okay. I don't think there'd be anything wrong with that. But I'm going to try to do happy. And I'm going to do it in cursive.
All right, it's a nice little happy 4th of July. I might improve my T there a little bit, but it's not really that important. The end of the July w went off the screen there for me. Sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. That's pretty good. And then I'll go through and just do some of this little lining on the jars here. You could also use a paint pen here if you wanted to. It would be just fine as well. Just running a little bit of like this sort of highlighting line on these. Kind of see how that does help place the uh, sparklers in the jars. Yeah. A little bit. All right, so doing pretty good. Our jars are looking pretty solid. I'm going to go ahead and go like this. Top a couple of these jars, like saying, oh, that's a little bit of a reflection. It's pretty good. Okay, let's dry everything and come back and show you the next steps. Now while I'm here, I'm going to grab a little bit of my blue and uh, some of my black, but really I'm focusing it on it being blue. And I'm going to come here and go under some of my letters here. This is kind of like some shading on them. I come under that Y. All right, so we're just doing that second little shade on those. Kind of a contrast line. Well, these letters tend to be embossed on the jars, so the little shading can help that effect. Give that sense of, oh, this is embossed, or that glass is a little bit thicker. Come underneath. See, right, it just gives a little contrast to what you've got going there. And I'm going to go ahead and maybe come here and imply a little bit of contrast on maybe the stems, the, the sparklers, just to give them a little bit of contrast too. Sometimes a little bit of lining on that helps them sort of show up and have placement. I'm going to grab my yellow and a little bit of white here. Kind of also highlight these just a little bit to help them stand out. Can you see how we're doing? And that's just going to help them sort of stand out from the background a little. Doesn't have to just be everything, but we're just going to go through and just give them a little bit of that contrasting highlight so that when we put all those little sparkles in, you, we don't lose our, our sparklers themselves, if that makes sense. And these are just light lines. Look how little I'm doing. It's very little. It's not deep. It's not deep. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of my blue. I'm going to come here and add some blue back into the jar. Isn't it great how it just starts to feel like glass? Really does, yeah. All right, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to grab some white. Just very. Add some brighter highlights on the glass. I'm using my bright brush again. I'm kind of focusing this a little bit more on the right side. But you can see how with just a little bit, we get a lot. Oh yeah, you really do. 
Like it just starts to look amazing out of the blue. And I love that part of this. I'm going to make sure that I've got little lines here because I like them. Okay. So our happy 4th of July jars look pretty happy, I think. All right. Let's dry everything and then I'll show you how we get our sparkle going. So now I want to do my red sparkles. I'm going to use my round brush from earlier, which is my number 10 Raphael Textura, and I'm going to grab a little bit of white, and I want it to be white, 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 and I'm going to come into the center of my little sparkle here, and I'm going to make it very, very white in the center. I'm going to do the same right here. I'm also going to do some little dashes coming down. Okay, because these things drip, they drip little bits of fire, don't they? So I definitely want to have that a couple places coming down so that my sparklers are sparkling down. I'm going to get my yellow and I'm going to come just a little bit to this outside edge. Not a huge touch of it, okay? I really want to leave this white center white. I'm going to rinse out thoroughly. Um, to do the next part though, I need the white to be dry, so I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer, okay? And when we come back, we'll add the red paint, but if I add it now, what I'm going to get is pink. So I'm going to take my round brush again here in step 12. I'm going to load it up with my red, and I'm going to come out here over the white that I painted, and then around also just generally. So what will happen is the red will really be bright over the white, and then it will darken a little bit over the black, which is going to give me kind of a tonality, which will make some of it feel like it's in a bright light and some of it feel like it's glowing. And I'm going to come over my little dots a little bit and make, so I'm kind of adding a little bit of red coming down. We're going to actually get back in and glow the centers of those in a really cool trick, but this is how you do that. Oh, I'm getting big, aren't I? Well, you know, my sparkles are very sparkly today. They can do that. See, coming in from the edge here. All right, so that's a nice red sparkle. And then it's got a little friend red sparkle. I may have to put my white back here when I come back in to do my white because I actually want the whites to be focal, but we'll see if we like them pushed back or pulled forward. I feel forward because it's red, white, and blue. Just brushing it around and you see leaving it white in the center is what gives it that sense of bright glowy heat. And then we come back and put the little embers coming out. That'll be really powerful. Okay. That's very, very good. I'm going to go ahead and load the tip of my brush with some of that white paint that I splattered with. And I'm going to also add some little embers. See how I'm doing little dots? Yeah. So like little hot embers in the sparklers, but they're red because we put that red down. We're adding little embers coming out, if you can see. So little dots of embers coming out. Fire, 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 fire. Super sparkle, 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 sparkle. 
Yeah, they're super sparkles. They're super duper sparkly. See how that makes them super sparkly? What do you think of this, John? So a trick, I like right? it. Yeah, I think that, I think the sparkles are cool. Just something fun to do. Fun to paint fireworks. Explosive things. Look at that. Don't they look sparkly? I think so. Yay. All right. <laughs> Let's call this a step. I'm going to go add my uh, extra little white to my blue and then dry it. So I'm going to come here and just make sure that my centers are very, very white. Coming around, coming around, coming around, coming around, coming around. The reason I'm kind of pushing these to left is I'm going to end up pulling them forward and making them central. So that does by chance mean that I will probably definitely be painting them white again. And then we'll do some little sparkly embers coming down this. I don't want to take out my July, so I'll leave that there. It's pretty embery. Getting really into it there. It's going to be very blue. Now I need to dry this thoroughly, 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 thoroughly. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the red, but I'm going to come in with the blue. And I don't really worry about the yellow there. Because when blue is really hot, generally white is its center. So I can actually just come through and start with just the blue. And that's like pretty wild. Then I can put blue over my white dots. And you can see I'm doing it where it kind of glows around them. And again, leaving that center white hot, painting the blue around. These blue sparklers coming around. It's very, very holiday festival feeling. Nice white center. And then I will for this one, right, just because the blue is so transparent, Come back through with some white and blue. And add that in a bit. Just so it really reads as blue and white for us. Now, I feel like I lost a little bit of my uh, blue center there, so I'm going to come in, I mean my white center, and make sure that this is really kind of coming out. Just coming back with white paint and making sure it's radiating out. Have fun. And then let's do our little dashes of glow, right? Dipping into the same paint that I did the stars with. And I'm just implying little bits of sparkly out radial glow, right? Yeah. Because sparklers sparkle. They do. They tend to And in art, we use marks and strokes and energy and directionality to imply things are what they are, not just color and value. And so in this case, we're using some marks to talk about the sparkliness of the sparklers. Right.
And there we got some little sparklers dripping down. And really just coming off the canvas every direction. Now, to do the next part, it has got to be dry. So let's make it dry, dry, dry. So I've got to start painting these whites to come forward, the white ones. And I'm going to load my round brush again with my acrylic paint. And come around here and paint these more on top. And see how that pulls it forward? Now these, right, they don't have, they don't have the secondary color, so it's really about me using the energy of that brush stroke to pull them where they go. Pulling the whites forward. I will also come into my fluid white. All right, kind of come over this. Adding those little sparkly energies. They're sparkly energies. Sparkly energy. Power up, sparklers. Yeah. See, I'm just painting them out there. I do like the fluid paint if you can do it because it's a little more pigmented. And so it really kind of covers and helps these feel like white sparklers. You can see I'm kind of like not overdoing this one too much so I don't lose my red. I'm not overdoing this one too much so I don't lose my blue. And then I'm going to kind of load up the tip of my you brush must. and bring some little sparkles. You could say that you brought balance to the fourth. <laughs> you could. And you should. I think. <laughs> Anyways, that's my weird little 4th of July dealio right there. I'm going to go ahead and um, give this a signature. Say I did this on purpose. <laughs> Over here in the corner with my liner brush. When we come back, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do next. So if anything you saw in today's painting was interesting to you and you're like, where do I get that? I have a lot of the materials you see shown here for sale in my art store, which you can find on my website. You don't ever need to do that uh, to paint along. These lessons are always going to be on YouTube for free. And for that matter, it's so cool that I think you should subscribe. <laughs> I think if you haven't checked in a while, make sure that you're still subscribed. Uh, thumbs up the video. Let me know you had a lot of fun painting this. I really wanted something that was maybe kind of new and fresh visually for you guys. And that also um, let you have something light and airy to paint with family and friends for the holidays. And I thought that this was a fun one. And you can really customize this. You could put family names. You could put your pet's names on here. Like there's so much you could do to make this painting your own. And these are great because they can come out for the holiday, hit the wall, decorate your home, and then be put away for next year. Now, I have a playlist of all my 4th of July paintings. So you should check out the other ones too. I've got some fun stuff that I've done. I've been on YouTube for like 10 years. So there's some different fun paintings that you might enjoy doing. And you can check those out. I did two this year. So two fresh ones uh, are available to you guys. You also want to check out what's coming up on my calendar. If you go to my website, theartripper.com, you'll see the calendar. And I'll let you know what lessons are coming up. 
And there's no way to tell you this, but I drop uh, one minute videos right now all about brushes, techniques, extra stuff that you might wanna know as a new painter. Things just to make it easier to be new at painting, like what's a D brush? What does it do? What does a fan do? Why would you care? Those kinds of things. So that's the other good reason to do subscribe. If I didn't get to your question during the show today, during the live chat, go ahead and, because like maybe you're here on replay, you're here on a different 4th of July, go ahead and put that in the comments below because I absolutely do check my channel all the time to look for comments or questions and things. And so chances are I'll still be able to answer your question even years later through the magic of YouTube. John, thank you so much for your time today. Oh no, thank you for doing this. This is awesome. I wanna thank the moderators for being here for live chat, making sure that we have such a safe and inclusive and fun group. I want you guys to be safe out there, be responsible, enjoy the holiday, and you know, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. I'll see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.